This is the Waikemi fruit and vegetable slicer. One look at this and you can tell it means serious business. This is more of an industrial item. You probably won't need something like this in your home kitchen. Every single time you spin this, it'll cut it twice. There's an adjustment knob for thin slicing and thick slicing. The only thing I had to do was take it out of the box, put on these four suction cups and this little handle here. And you do have to tighten this nut or this little handle is just gonna keep on falling off as you spin this. Let's give it a try. There's a handle here so you can lift this whole thing and put it wherever you want. The hopper has a knob and you can pull this all the way out. It's about seven and a quarter inch. First, I wanna try something quite difficult, which is a tomato. You need really sharp blades in order to do this. I wanted to slice the top of the tomato first. Just slowly let this in there. The thickness adjustment knob, as you turn it open more, you can see the gap between here and here gets bigger. But if I close it, when it's fully closed, there is no gap here. One cut. That's one of them right there. Let's do one more. Whoa, look at that. Oh, geez. The thickness of my tomato does look roughly the gap between here. I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible to see how fast this can cut. Two, three, one, two, one, two. Okay, wow. Talk about industrial. This is crazy fast. Look at that. <laughs> Next up, I'm gonna slice the orange. Position it and then put it in there. Slow motion cut here. It cut a little bit. The orange is pushing against the back of this thing. And as I'm turning it, the orange is being pushed. And then the blade here is a set amount of distance I've set it to. When I cut this, does it cut? Cuts it a little harder. Now incoming is the second blade. I'm gonna do this fairly slowly. It just slices it like crazy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is sharp. One more time. I think it'll actually do a better job if I go faster. When I go so slow like this, it might just kind of squish the orange instead. Let's do it a little bit faster. Here are all the oranges. Use them like garnishes. Next up is an onion. I removed the skin already and I'm gonna put this face towards the blade. Surprisingly, it fits the whole onion, which is a good thing. And then release the hopper. This time I wanna test out how thin it can slice the onion. So I'm gonna close it up all the way. This is how thin it can get. Let me see if I can turn it. It's actually really tight now. Let me see if that will work still. It seems like it's cutting it in this round, but when I go to cutting it with this blade, it doesn't cut it on that one, but that's okay because this is like super duper thin. Let's do that. Two. Wow, look at that. Really, really thin onion here. Next up, I wanna slice this cabbage. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit in the hopper, so maybe I'll cut it in half first. Does a half a cabbage fit in there? Let's see. Whoa, it fits in there, cool. Keep in mind that the bottom is kind of pointy. So I wanna put the pointy end of the cabbage in there and it can fit more, like that. I think I wanna cut the tip of the cabbage and the root here will hold the rest of the cabbage together as it pushes it in there. It's at the very thinnest setting. This is the kind of cabbage that you would eat with tonkatsu in Japanese cuisine. So maybe it'll work. Mmm, is this thin enough? When you first cut a cabbage, I think they're bigger slices. So let me continue and cut a little bit more. It kind of spills a little bit. You can see a little bit of the cabbage goes to the left here. Oh yeah, this is the kind of lettuce you would eat with Japanese tonkatsu. Now what about cleaning? You wanna wipe these blades, you wanna remove this whole thing, so how do you do that? Turn this towards the back. It has a retaining pin, just push that out. 
and you just push the cylinder out and this whole thing pops off. Now you can go and clean the blades and also wipe this down a bit and also inside the hopper. One concern I have is that you don't want to get food inside this cylinder here. In other words, if I push this in, there's a space inside this machine that food can get caught here. There's one side here and also another side. These are all held by rivets, not screws. So you can't actually open these up and remove these panels. So if some food gets stuck in here, which it shouldn't, if you are a careful user because all the food should be coming out of here, not in there somehow, then you should be fine. Once you're done cleaning it, you put the blade back. Note that the blade has these screws. You can actually remove these blades and sharpen them. Putting this back. As a home user, you probably don't need to cut that many tomatoes. One knife would really work. Oranges also probably don't need to do it unless you're doing it for a big party and you gotta go through like 20 oranges. It's like what they do at restaurants. The onion's an interesting one because it can cut it so thin that I think it will be very difficult for me to do this with just a knife. I don't like raw onions, but I'll try. Yeah. Same thing with the cabbage. So in this case, there is a potential use for a home user to use this thing to create this type of cabbage salad or really, really thin onions. Need some dressing, but the thinness is great. Most of this is stainless steel. It's food grade, so safe for food. If you guys are interested in this product, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.